Hello, and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we talk to you about a super cool thing that we've been testing out and reviewing here in PC Labs. And today, our cool thing is actually a cool toy, and we'll talk about why it's a toy more so than a tech than an actual piece of serious technology as we go on. But yes, it is a drone. It is very cheap, easy to fly, and we're gonna tell you all about it. Um, but we would like to answer your questions as well about drones, toys, technology, whatever else you might have on your mind. Please enter them into the comments section if you're watching us on Facebook Live, and we will respond to you um, as soon as we can. Or if you're watching us later on YouTube or somewhere else, definitely consider coming back at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We have, every day, we have a one cool thing for you. Um, I'm Tom Brandt, this is Jim Fisher, and we have a $99 drone here to show you today. What is this? We do indeed, it is the Rise Tello, and this made a big splash at CES. It was announced, but no one could actually see it being really used or what the quality was as the $100 beginner drone. It's got DJI and Intel technology inside the DJI stuff. Uh, it's not as advanced as, say, a Mavic or a Phantom model, but uh, which costs significantly more. Which costs, you know, <laughs> starting price four or five hundred dollars right. there. So uh, it's a little tiny toy drone. It flies for about ten minutes on a battery charge. There's no GPS or safety features like return to home, but the range is really limited. You're looking, even in, a, in my rural test area where there's not a lot of Wi-Fi interference, 150 feet, mm -hmm. you know, half a football field or so. But there are some advanced features, like it does do video, or, it does, or in, there, there is an onboard camera. There's an onboard camera that streams 720p video to your phone, fairly low bit rate, fairly low quality, a lot of garbled high blocky looking footage and five megapixel stills. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not why we're recommending it, uh, because honestly, if you're thinking about something for pro video or any even YouTubeable fun travel video, this is not gonna get the job done. Uh, we like this uh, as a tool for kids to get them interested in programming. Yeah, and so the programming aspect of it is really cool. There are a lot of drones that are out there that can teach kids how to um, build things, both uh, software things and hardware things. But yeah, that, that that's really kind of what this is geared towards. Right? Yeah, you know, this works with MIT Scratch and uh, we uh, have it set up for a live demo, which did work before the show. We'll see if it works here now. Everything always works before the show. Everything works before the show. Uh, so I've got Scratch loaded here on my laptop. I link out to a couple of tutorials in the review about how to install Scratch because that is a process. Uh, you have to, are we, if we can switch over to get things going, you have to like t go into terminal here and on, you know, Mac OS and start running a node command to commit, you know, have, have Scratch talk with a Wi-Fi network to talk to the drone. Uh, and when you're comp controlling the computer, there's no video or still imaging capabilities, you can pretty much fly it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click my takeoff block in Scratch and I'm move the laptop just a little far away, okay. a little bit away. And this should spin uh, up yes. for hours. There we go. It's pretty high. Launched via a software. Game. All right. So let me have it fly down a little bit, lower the altitude there to something more reasonable. And then, you know, I can just do little things like I can rotate it around clockwise. I could flip it, but we don't have the space in here to do that safely. That would assuredly end in a crash. Uh, and you can have it fly in any direction. And we're just going to, I'm going to take the laptop off of here so we have a little bit of room for the thing to land. And now remember, these are all via software commands in Scratch. And, oh. whoops. <laughs> well, that's what happens. Uh, it's using downward facing, and this is a DJI technology, mm -hmm. downward facing sensors to kind of read the ground. As you can see, you got a little bit of drift in here. Right. It's not as steady as the proper DJI drones that use both the downward facing sensors and GPS to keep it steady. Sure. But so even just, you know, just a little bit of drift here, had it go, off the table. But that actually was an even better demo because as you saw there, this thing is so light and it has propeller guards that even if you do crash from this significant height to the floor. It's yeah, fine. it's fine. And it's very <laughs> lightweight. It's it's so light you don't need to register with the FAA uh, if you're looking at it. And you really can't, other than getting it lost on a roof, you know, which is a real possibility, <laughs> it's tough to get in any sort of real trouble with it. Which is makes it great for kids. Um, we are just looking at the Rise Tello drone if you've just joined us, and we would like to take some questions. Is there a stated age range for this? There's not. Uh, I mean, 
it relies on, if you're flying with your smartphone, which you can also do, we shouldn't, you know, there's a smartphone app called Tello that's free for Android and iOS and will work with on-screen controls to fly it. But what, the, the child, Digital Child Protection Act calls for uh, someone yes. to be at least 13 to agree to terms of service. Right. So legally, I guess that's it. But, you know, if you've got a big backyard and you're not too worried about your kid flying with an 85, uh, selling for 85 on Amazon, $100, $100 toy, uh, you know, I would say 10-ish is probably a good gauge. I don't have kids, so I don't know how old they are before they do things. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where it depends on your son or daughter's uh, uh, likelihood to be interested in the technological aspects of this because Flying a drone is really cool, but being able to learn the software commands that, that fly it you know, using code, that's even cooler. And if, yeah. if your kids are interested in that, um, it's a great way to uh, start them off on the path to being a software engineer without having to send them to code boot camp. Right, and you can forget, <laughs> you can completely ignore the scratch aspect and just use it with your phone as a remote control. It's got the on-screen joysticks. They're a little kludgy, but this thing doesn't go that fast, doesn't fly that far away. You can also pair a Bluetooth remote control with your phone. They sell for like 20, 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. And that will let you kind of have the joystick type control a little more mm -hmm. smooth motion out of it. Um, now, we would like to look at some things like charging, things like that, but let's take another question first. So where is the, exactly the line between toy and then actual drone for you? For me, uh, for me, it's the GPS function. If the if the uh, object if the subject has a GPS, uh, that means it has returned to home and some other automated. This will do an orbit automated, but it won't do like waypoints or more advanced automated options. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can find a point in space and kind of orbit around it, but it's not GPS assisted, so it's not going to be that perfect circle you get with the with the with ones that have the real GPS. And video quality as well. I mean, you know, just like a camera, which is what I, you know, my background is in, you have cameras that are $100, $200 that are fine for someone who wants to take a snapshot of their grandkids, and you have the $4,000 pro grade Sony A9 20 frame per second raw sports sure. shooting camera sure. uh, that is a professional tool. Yeah, and we actually have a sample of the video here, which we can just play a few seconds of, and you can see that in this scene of like a, um, you know, a farm uh, setting, the drone really doesn't capture smooth video at all. No, it's, it's blocky, it's compressed, and that is not YouTube or our feed. That is the quality of the video. I've actually got yeah. the same thing on the laptop. We could stream out if we yeah. wanted to without the YouTube streaming. Uh, it just shows you, you know, when you're flying with the on-screen controls, the control's a little kludgy, you can't get the smooth motions. Uh, if, you're, if you're looking to do this more as a thing to fly around the backyard or the park, yeah, I recommend spending the $29 or whatever it is on the on a remote control. Um, let's take another question. Can you recap price again, and what does that come with? It's $99 retail. Right now, it looks like it's selling for about $85 on Amazon. I don't know if that's a remnant of Prime Day or if that's price is going to stick around. Uh, you get this, and you get the battery, which is removable and rechargeable inside via micro USB, single port there, and that's it. Now, can you buy extra equipment for this? What, all, what, other, what other options are You can buy spare batteries. Uh, I believe the price is pretty reasonable. It's around $20. It's in the review for sure, but mm -hmm. it's the, uh, the ballpark. And you buy replacement propellers and you know, other things. And you, right. can buy, you can buy stickers to go on it. Uh, you can either swap out that white cover for a blue or yellow plastic one. I was going to say, or, for a toy, you kind of want some more colors. Okay. Right, there's some <laughs> vinyl options that kind of wrap it around in more interesting, colorful patterns that are under ten dollars but ultimately i think you would do well to invest in extra batteries because as you said wait did we did we go over uh range it's what? about it's the uh it's about 10 minutes of life 10 the, minutes the of hovering life. just hovering doing nothing it's rated for 13 but when you take it out and fly and move it around a little bit you're looking closer to 10. yeah so if you're if you're the first time you're flying your drone you're not going to get a hang of it for those first 10 minutes it's going to be frustrating if you yeah. have to then go back and charge it how long does charging take uh it takes about an hour. Take about an hour. It takes yeah. about, it, it, it depends on which what charger you use too. You can use like an iPad charger that has more sure. juice going to it with a USB cable, micro USB plugged in, and charge it faster than you can with a little phone charger. Yeah. Um, let's take another question. Is there any first person view option? Yes. Yes. Not with a laptop or with Scratch. What we're going to do here is I'm going to turn. Okay, that's already not on that Wi-Fi anymore. So I can close the laptop lid and I can make sure that this is on. It's powered off via time. So I'm going to get the little blinking light here and this is going to be the fun part where 
we have to change our live demo setting. So see if we can do that. <laughs> and because we're making a Wi-Fi connection between the phone and the uh, drone, we can't screencast it, unfortunately, because that's something we do over AirPlay uh, when we do it from a phone. Uh, and I'm looking in my networks list for Tello, and I, I, there are at least two dozen, three dozen yeah. networks in here. Here that's we go. That's one of the hazards of uh, so, flying this in a big uh, office building. <laughs> Thankfully, it showed up. Tello A nine D eight seven eight is the network. There's no password required to get on. Uh, so that could be a security concern with someone. But yeah, then you get. I so mean, as you can see, this actually is the live video feed. Yeah, the chances of you being out in the wild and someone taking over your Tello. Uh, Wi-Fi, other than it being like a family member is a joke. I think that's a pretty minimal sure. case. That's an edge case there. And as you said, worst case scenario, this ends up on a roof and you have to get a ladder to get it. I mean, there's yeah. not much that this thing can damage. Yeah. If there was, the FAA would be more interested in it. Yeah, but. <laughs> and yeah, it's only a couple ounces in weight. So even if it yeah. falls and hits you in the head, it's not going to get up that high to, to hurt you. Right. Um, Just keep now, an eye out. This and you can hand catch it too. I was, I was oh, hand yeah. catching it before. Will it, will it, yeah, so you could basically have yeah. it land well, on here, the Here, I'll, I'll have it take off, so right, clear so your hands. Try this. Okay. We're going to slide the take off here with the phone. And here, you know, the phone controls. Phone controls are the on screen controls, and I can rotate it, you know, and we will we'll brave this here. <laughs> Hand landing, we click. I have to hit yes to let it know that I'm not going to sue them if I uh, hurt myself here. Come on, hand landing. All right. <laughs> You're chasing it. <laughs> I know. It was, it was using its... Tap OK and put your hand open palm and flat object other than crew. Oh, OK. So it actually provides you on-screen tips for, yes. the, for the landing process. It's actually... The there oh, we there go. We go. Okay. So. Yeah, you have to hit yes every time before the hand landing, which is a little annoying, but it does give you instructions saying where to place your hand. It uses those vision sensors to recognize your palm and land safely in it without injury. <laughs> Let's take another question. Is it legal to fly this over neighborhoods? Uh, this particular drone, you don't want to fly over neighborhoods because it's just not going to get high enough to clear trees and you're going to end up crashing it. Yeah, uh, you can fly it over your neighborhood within it, 10 minutes. It may be legal. I don't think it's safe. I, I would say stick to open air areas for this particular one. Don't fly it over water. Uh, backyards are great. Parks without a lot of people running around them are great. Uh, a farm, as you farm, said. Yeah. Farm, yeah. If you have access to an Amish farm, you know, <laughs> you can do that. Uh, the... Uh, I had a thought and I lost it. I'm sorry, audience. Well, I mean, one of the things that you have to remember about drones is that there's been a lot of different regulations that the FAA right, has, right. has come up with. And, and this is not subject to those, This right? is not subject to your FAA because of the weight. And the FAA says you're clear to fly more than five miles away from the airport at altitudes less than 400 feet. This is not getting anywhere near 400 sure. feet. <laughs> uh, and just don't fly near an airport. Don't be dumb. Yeah. I mean, this is not going to do any damage to anything, but don't, don't be dumb. Um, yes, so the Tello drone, it is only $99 or maybe slightly cheaper if you can find it on Amazon like we saw right now. Um, <clears throat> let's take another question. Oh, we're all good. Okay, so basically what we have got here is a cross between a toy and an actual um, serious business drone, but it's kind of leads more towards the to toy part. Much more towards the toy aspect of it. And if you've got someone who is younger or even older and interested in learning programming and toying around with an inexpensive remote controlled toy that happens to have a camera on it that records, it, it records video. It records it to your phone, like so there's no memory card in the drone itself. Uh, it's worth a look. We gave it a three and a half. We didn't quite think it's good enough to give a four. If it had onboard storage and 1080p, sure, that would seem like a no-brainer, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. And what is the next step up for someone looking for uh, those types of things? The next step up would be the DJI Spark, mm -hmm. uh, which is similar in size and concept. It's a little 1080p selfie drone, shorter flight times, but the video quality is much higher. It's got a GPS. And then if you're even more serious, I would say go with the Mavic Air or the Mavic Pro Platinum, which, you know, creep into the $700, $2,000 price range. Yeah. So, but if you're just looking for a great uh, toy for kids, especially if you're looking for an educational toy that kids can learn uh, how to code with, the, uh, tr the tr Tello drone is a great option. Uh, check out the full review at PCMag.com and definitely come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time 
when we will have yet another one cool thing for you.